Welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name is Chris and I build productivity apps. The two productivity apps I've been focusing on on this channel are Ellie, which is a daily planning app. It's an app that lets you plan out your day and visualize your week. The second app I usually talk about is Luna, which is a budgeting app that I recently launched. It's available on iOS. So that one's pretty new, but it does actually have a handful of users using it. So as I've been posting these videos on YouTube, one of the common questions I've been getting is, how did I get started with product analytics? How do I think about product analytics? So this is the video about product analytics that I wish existed when I started my building journey. This video is gonna be super actionable and very applicable to early stage builders. So if you've never implemented analytics or you have, but you're really not sure where to take it, this video is gonna be tailored to you. You guys are gonna see real data from my productivity app, Ellie, the numbers that I look at, the questions that I ask myself, so you guys can actually see how I think about product analytics as an early stage app builder. So that's what we're gonna be covering today. And my hope is that by the end of the video, you're way more comfortable with analytics. And if you're not a product builder and you're watching this, hopefully this is just a fun video for you to see behind the scenes of a productivity app. Okay, so the first thing I wanna address is how do I approach analytics? What are my recommendations? The first important thing is I only track and monitor exactly what I need. A big mistake that I made early on was I looked to big companies for advice on how to get started with this stuff. So I was reading articles from Spotify and Airbnb on how they do their analytics. And this is all really good advice, but the problem is they're just at a different scale than I'm at. They have hundreds of millions of users and I had like five users using my product. So them tracking like the intricacies of their onboarding flow and figuring out where people drop off and A-B testing all these images, none of that really applied to me because my product did didn't even have the basics down. I ended up copying a lot of their strategies, tracking onboarding, tracking retention for specific features. I ended up with a lot of useless data points. I wasn't even making product decisions because I had this information paralysis just staring at a dashboard with a hundred different charts. When I realized that this was a problem, I changed my philosophy. I try to keep it simple and track as little as possible. So then the next question is, okay, if I'm not supposed to track everything, what should I be tracking then? So here's my specific actionable advice for early stage builders. If your product is very early, like my budgeting app Luna or the way Ellie was a couple months months ago, the one thing I would look at is week one retention. And basically what this means is how many people after sign up are still using your app one week later. So the reason this is important is it tells you are people actually using your app. So let's take Ellie for example, a couple months ago when I first started looking at analytics and I was tracking this number, week one retention was less than 1%. That means for every 100 users that signed up for Ellie, maybe one user was using it a week later, which is pretty bad. When you see a number like week one retention, you see it's less than 1%, basically none of the other metrics matter anymore. There's no point in trying to optimize and A-B test everything if people sign up and no one's sticking to your app. Let's say you're tracking week one retention. Okay, so what do you do now? I know that it's less than 1% for Ellie. How am I going to improve that? This is an answer you probably don't wanna hear, but it's you gotta go talk to users. That could be through email, that could be calling them on the phone, but you need to talk to users and ask them, is there something missing? Like what's going on? The answers to that are the secret to improving that week one retention number. When I started talking to users and asking them, hey, why did you drop off. Shockingly, people actually responded to me and were pretty honest. And they would tell me things like, you only support Google Calendar and I use Outlook, or I use Apple Calendar. I really need push notification support for my meetings, stuff like that. Once I started hearing some of this stuff over and over again, I realized I need to deliver these features for them to even begin to use the product. What I started doing is relentlessly started building out some of these features to try to improve that week one retention. Let's take the Outlook and the Apple Calendar examples. Once I released those integrations, the week one retention went up to like 19%. So now when 100 people sign up, around 19 people would be using it a week later. There's still like 80 something people who dropped off, but this is a huge improvement from where the app was a couple months ago before I had these integrations. And honestly, no amount of product analytics would have answered that question. I had to go talk to the users to figure this out. So my advice to early stage builders is religiously track week one retention. The number will be depressingly low, most likely, but that's great because now you have a benchmark. Then you start talking to users, figuring out what's missing, build those things for them, and then see if that week one retention increases over time. And this is the approach that I'm taking for my app Luna. The one thing I'm tracking is week one retention. And then I'm looking at the feedback board and talking to customers to figure out what do I build? How do I get them to stick with the app and not drop off immediately? That's how I approach things at a very early stage. Okay, so now let's talk about when should you start tracking more stuff. Let's say you've improved week one retention. Let's say that week one retention is 34% right now. If hundred people sign up, 34 people are still using the app, which is so much better than it was a couple months ago. So this is the stage that I would recommend using analytics analytics to figure out what to prioritize. And at the end of the day, that's what analytics really is. It's supposed to be a tool to help you figure out what to work on and prioritize the roadmap. So looking at Ellie, one thing that I noticed was people keep requesting features that already exist in the app. This is signaling to me that there might be a feature discoverability problem here. Like people aren't aware that some of these features exist. So one of the things that I wanna answer is if I have to tackle and try to improve feature discoverability for certain features, which are the features that need the most help? One of the boards and one of the things that I'm now tracking
tracking is how many people sign up and use this feature or turn this feature on at least once. If the number is really low, there's a high chance people don't know it exists. So let me show you guys what this board looks like. And this is real data. This is the last 30 days. This is my real thought process here. When I see something like this, you know, I could improve basically everything here. Like I, all these numbers can be improved, but I think the two most shocking things that I see here, to be honest, are the fact that only 3% of people are creating lists. That's extremely shocking to me. Lists are, in my opinion, such a critical feature of the app. Like I use it on a daily basis. Everyone that I know who uses Ellie uses lists. If only 3% are using it, that's a problem. Calendar linked. So this one's pretty interesting to me. 17% of people who signed up actually linked a calendar. I thought the number would be closer to like 50% or something. Maybe my onboarding is not clear enough that they can't even link the calendar. A number this low is signals to me. This is definitely an area that I should also improve in. This is basically my process. Look at these graphs, implement features, see if it went up, look at these graphs and just repeat the process over and over again. And once these small graphs go up, I know that week one retention will go up and then I know conversion and I know revenue will be going up. This is a very simplified version of, of my actual process that I'm using when building the app. But again, I didn't do this until I knew that the week one retention was at a pretty good place. I feel like if I looked at this too early, all of these charts would be horrible and I would get kind of distracted and overwhelmed and it really wouldn't be helpful for me to prioritize things. So let's talk a little bit about what tools I use, how I actually track this stuff, how I implement it. So the tool that I use and the tool that I recommend all my builder friends use is Posthog. For transparency, they are sponsoring the video. This is a video I was planning on making before they even offered to sponsor it. And I've already recommended them in my past videos without them sponsoring. I promise that this has absolutely no influence on me using and recommending them. I was already doing it before. So if you wanna try them out, there's a link in the description. You can actually put my name down when you sign up so that they know this is where you came from. So if you wanna do that, go ahead. And if not, this advice works for any analytics tool out there. But I personally use and recommend Posthog. They're like the most affordable one. So just a little disclaimer, that is a sponsored link in the description. Even if you're not using Posthog, this is kind of the way it works for all the analytics tools. So there's usually some sort of package you can install on your app to make this a little easier. And they'll give you a little snippet that you can use to track events as they happen in your app. This is the part of my code base that fires every time a user creates a task. When I insert this code here, it'll actually go send this off to Posthog and this is what it looks like when it's fired. So as you see, I created the task. It now appears in Posthog and it's tracked on that user. So once you start adding these trackers and the data starts rolling in, you can then start creating dashboards inside of Posthog. So then you can start actually interpreting and reading the data. Let's take a look at a really simple example. You wanna see how many people sign up and create a task. So you can click add insight. And then what we're looking for is a funnel. So you add insight, you go to funnel. I'm also tracking when users sign up. The first step I'm gonna put in here is user signed up. And then the second step is gonna be task created. I'll aggregate it by only showing me unique users. And so what this is gonna do is show me how many people did the first step, which is they signed up and then created a task. And we're gonna say that they need to create that task in the first 14 days to count. So once we set that, and this has been collecting data for a while, we can see 516 people signed up and only 347 people actually created a task, which is about 67%. 30% actually didn't even create the task. They signed up and then just didn't do anything. But this is basically how you set these things up. Create this tracker, it's super simple. The data rolls in and then you create dashboards like this. And then you repeat the process over and over again for every single thing that you wanna track. You can use any analytics tool for this, but the one that I use and the one I recommend is Posthog. So sign up if you have, they have a very generous free plan, so you can just try them out and see if you like it. But that's how you set all this stuff up. Okay, so to wrap up the video, here are my key takeaways. Analytics is super powerful and I really think at any stage of the product journey, they can be implemented and used. Even really, really early on, I think they can be really useful, but the important thing is to only track exactly what you need so you don't get overwhelmed. And if you have to pick one thing, the specific thing I recommend tracking at the early stage is week one retention. How many people sign up and are still using your product a week later? That's my specific recommendation. And then once that's good, then you can start tracking other stuff to help you make product decisions. Then the most important takeaway here is that analytics is a supplement, but not a replacement to talking to users. Make sure you're still talking to users because that's the best way to figure out what to work on, especially at the early stage. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment below. If you like this kind of content, definitely go check out my TikTok and Instagram. I post almost every other day about building a productivity app. And obviously if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.